Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for being here. Today, I'm bringing you a Kickstarter preview of the Mariana Trench, a brand new family-friendly game from Bright Light Games. Now, in this game, you're going to be submarine divers venturing forth into the deepest part of the ocean, doing your best to gain knowledge and research and explore the depths of our planet, to understand why life exists there, and potentially, with the in-game expansion, discover some of the creatures that you might not want to run into. You see, the Mariana Trench is the deepest place on Earth, and it has historically been surrounded with mystery and ideas of what could potentially exist down in such a deep, dark place where the sunlight never reaches and the pressure is enough to crush your submarine if something goes wrong. And so you are one of the many scientists who are venturing forth to dive down into the trench, collect information on the creatures that exist on the outskirts and deep within the recesses, gather research tokens, and make your way back up to the surface. This is a filler game. And that means this is a game that is predominantly meant to be played when you're sitting around waiting for something to happen either sitting at a friend's house waiting for others to arrive to play a game, play this in between while someone grabs snacks from the kitchen, or sit down with your family and friends on a holiday evening and just explore and have a little bit of fun. Your average game session is going to take about 10 to 15 minutes, and typically you'll play a potential series of games, pressing your luck and diving deeper and deeper into the recesses. The object of the game is to well, collect the most victory points, but you'll do that through two important methods. First off, by venturing in and collecting various different sea creatures that you find on your journeys down, from manta rays to giant octopuses all the way to the great white shark. But then you also have the opportunity to score by making it the whole way down to the trench floor. There you'll collect research tokens and meander your way back up to the surface where you'll drop them off to score victory points. This is a combination of set collection with the different types of creatures that you're trying to discover uh, and pressure luck. You never quite know what you're going to be coming across. In the base game, in the core game, you're going to have a deck of cards. All of these will have various different sea creatures that you might, uh, you might encounter along the way, along with oxygen tanks down here at the very bottom. This is going to signal the end of the game. So as you're venturing forth and collecting cards, you're also going to be very quickly running out of time and running out of oxygen. On your turn, you'll have two core decisions. First off, based on your personal movement, how far down do you want your submarine to go? Here with the shrimp, I can move two spaces. So I can move down, stop there, and reveal the card that I paused on. Now these cards are going to have two opportunities on them as well. On the left side of the card, you're going to have the chance to upgrade your ship. For instance, here with the manta ray, I can slide this under my ship and give myself the opportunity to carry one large creature or carry two small creatures. The other option is going to be carrying one of these creatures, putting it into your hole, gathering research data on it, and bringing it back up to the surface to catalog and then release back into the sea. The manta ray, however, is going to be a shark type, and it is going to be a large fish, which currently the shrimp is not able to equip or hold. So as I'm moving down, as I'm pressing my luck and deciding how deep I want to dive, I'm also choosing whether or not I want to equip or score various different sea creatures. I've chosen to add that as a technology to my ship, giving me the opportunity to carry larger fish the next time I encounter one, and the whole map is going to cycle down. And then it'll be over onto my opponent's turn. Maybe they'll choose to move one space down, reveal that card, giving them the opportunity to score a tuna fish. Either, again, equipping their hull to carry a larger fish, or, more importantly, giving them the chance to go ahead and pull one of these small fish back up to the top into their scoring dock. In order to gain victory points in this game, you're going to need sets of fish. You could have a run, meaning the same type of two, three, or four, or you could have sets or different types of two, three, or four. Each collection is going to score you a greater and greater amount of victory points. So once again, this would go, and then we continue with the game. Now, it's not always as simple as diving down, collecting whatever you come across, and pushing your way back up to the surface. Instead, you do have some decisions that need to be made. First off, each of your vessels are going to be vulnerable to attacks, and if you happen to come across one of the... Uh, sea creatures with this 
little signal on it, meaning the giant octopus in this case, you run the risk of being wrapped around and slowly crushed as gaskets start to pop on your tiny little vessel. Each of these gaskets that break is going to lose you victory points at the end of the game, so it is risky to potentially run into these creatures without some form of defense. But defense is going to be expensive. In order to have an electric shock to scare off any of these large tentacled creatures, you have to pause up here at the top, recharging your defense system, giving yourself that token, and then diving back down into the depths until you either make it the whole way to the bottom, collect some research tokens, or come across a giant octopus and use your electric shock to make sure they don't do any more damage than has already been done. Along with that, you have various ways to upgrade your ship. So the decision between what technology you take that gives you more agency and control over the press your luck element of this game versus what fish or what creatures you decide to carry with you and score is also going to be a pressure point or a pressure luck mechanic here. You see, we have the ability to equip larger fish in our hull and carry those. We have a radar which will allow us to get a sense of what is either above or below us, allowing us to plan a little bit more effectively and maybe hunt down those sea creatures that we're specifically looking for. We also have the ability to add additional movement to our vessel. In this case with a shrimp, I would be able to move three spaces every single turn, which allows me to reach the trench floor even quicker to collect these uh, alternative scoring conditions, your research tokens here. This is going to be a lightweight, quick, fast-paced game that is really designed to be tossed down on the table or carried in a pocket for whenever you want a little bit of a gaming fix, but you don't want to pull something heavier off the shelf. And for what it is, I think the base game does a really good job at being that, at being a filler game. But the base game doesn't come alone. You see, there are creatures at least historically, mythological creatures that exist down here in the Marina Trench. And while we have not yet discovered a Quackalope, I, I, I don't know why one couldn't have been around at some point. I mean, after all, some of these creatures are uh, monstrous enough to uh, certainly be intimidated by and fear the humble Quackalope. But this is going to be a in-box expansion called Creatures from the Deep. What this is going to do is it's going to fill the deck with a few other creatures that you can score. These will operate as wild cards. They add into any of the sets you're already trying to collect and give a little bit of a nice aesthetic to some of these deeper, weirder things that exist around this ecosystem. But more importantly for me, this is also going to add in a whole series of vicious and artistically stunning uh, beasts and creatures for you to face off against. Now, all of these will have slightly different rules that affect your ship. Some will pull you down to the bottom, some will break some gaskets, some will send you reeling for cover, damage different parts of your ship. Each one is going to have a significant effect on how you're playing. But these being added into the game for me, this slightly more cruel and slightly more advanced expansion, not only slows down the pace of the game, giving me more time to prepare, but also scales up the degree of pressure luck. I uh, am not always scared of running into a giant octopus when I realize that there's a chance I could hit a kraken. The base game is a good family-focused lightweight game, but for me, this expansion and whatever other expansions they decide to include are going to be core cards that I just sort of shuffle into the base game of the Mariana Trench. I like the way they slow down the game add a little bit more agency and cards for you to uh, pick from and plan around, and like I said, scale up that pressure luck element just a little bit higher. Overall, this is going to be a family-focused filler game, which I think I've repeated about 15 times, but along with that, it's going to be a coffee table game, it's going to be a backpack game, it's designed to be something that you grab on the go and just have with you when you're ready to play. And if you've made it to this point in the video, I'd like to point out that these submarines are not the only submarines they're offering. Swing over to that Kickstarter page, take a look at the beautiful artwork that's been done by the, uh, by the publisher here, and really dig into some of the other graphical choices that they're making. I love some of the alternates they're presenting as part of the Kickstarter rewards. The link will be in the top description of this video. Oh, and if you swing over there, and you happen to back this game, make sure you leave a quack in the comment section down below, because after all, uh, I figure if we get enough of them, I mean, a quackalope 
has to appear sooner or later, right? Whatever the case, all jokes aside, whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. And this is going to be a little bit of a weird ending. Most of you, by this point, will assume the video is over, but no. I did some research for this video just so I would have a sense of what I was talking about. And I have some uh, interesting facts I want to make sure I present you with. So, first off, there is an interesting duck species that lives on the Mariana Islands, which are the island reef that exists right next to the Mariana Trench over near the Philippines. The duck species that was native to that island was called the Mariana Mallard, which was a crossbreed of the common mallard that we have here in the States, and another, I believe, black-headed duck that happened to wander onto that island and didn't continue their migratory process. You see, the reason why this duck is so interesting is, well, one, it is extinct. It didn't survive very long. In fact, it is one of the most limited vertebrate populations that we know of in the scientific community, surviving only a total of 10,000 years, to the point where it's not classified as its own subspecies. Instead, it's sort of a, a branch off. It was certainly diverse and separated from the classic mallard, but not to a degree that allowed it to be independent or be able to breed independently. So the Mariana mallard, if we're talking about adding ducks into the lore of this game, Tristan, there happens to be one that is, I think, worth considering. Oh, and it's absolutely adorable. That being said, there's also some really cool information around the Mariana Trench. Uh, as you probably know, this is going to be the deepest point on planet Earth. This is the deepest uh, point in the ocean, and it's a rift that exists right on the edge of the Philippines. And back in the 1960s, for the first time ever, a few different scientists in a deep vessel, which was just kind of an iron pod, descended down to the Mariana Trench, not knowing what they would find there, not knowing what they would discover along the way, and they were shocked to find that it was full of life. This place that is both freezing cold and overwhelmingly uh, filled with pressure and gas and has different places where the hot pockets sort of bubble up water so hot that if you were near it with your bare skin, it would instantly boil. In areas so cold, you would have hypothermia if you were even exposed to them for a second. They ventured into this place and they found life. In fact, we found a lot of life in this ecosystem, in these dark caverns over the years. Over 200 individual unique microorganisms and tiny little, uh, tiny little, little creatures. It is packed and absolutely teeming with more and more discoveries as we're able to send unmanned electronic vessels deeper and deeper into the cavern. And so, I think this is pretty cool. And I think doing homage to something that has scientific nature mixed in with it and a beautiful story about the Mariana Mallard and just some interesting scientific facts, I've really enjoyed digging not only into this game, but also into the history and lore of this environment. The reason why so many of these myths exist, things like the uh, Dunla, I don't know that word, like the uh, Peleosaurus or the uh, Mosasaurus or the Megalodon or the Kraken, these creatures, which are real in some regards, have spilled into cultural icons because of our innate nature to be concerned of and, and fearful of the deep of what is unknown. And here on Earth, out of all the places that still have yet to be discovered and fully explored, from the Amazons to the middle of the uh, Sahara Desert, but more and more importantly, down here in the Mariana Trench. The discoveries we make here not only have revolutionized our idea and conceptualization around where and how life can exist, They've also started to redefine the origin of life itself, moving away from the idea of some uh, plasmic gel that I was kind of taught in high school, to the idea that the liquefied carbon that is emitted from the white smokestacks down here in the Mariana Trench were potentially the areas that started to team with life first. For all we know, what you're discovering as you venture down to the bottom of the trench floor 
is where we all potentially came from. Or not. You might just be discovering a kraken. Either way, I think it's worth exploring. And if you made it to this part, seriously leave a quack down in the comment section down below. If you like a little bit of information and facts and duck facts along with your uh, historical videos, or your board game videos, I suppose, let me know. I really did enjoy digging into this one, and I had so much flavor uh, that I just wasn't able to incorporate into the main video. I thought I would be very disappointed in myself if I didn't share a little bit of that with you.